What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Dirk Hamwood, and in this video, we will be covering Chapter 6, Multimedia, Section 4, Compression. Compression. Because of, the lar because of the large amount of data required to store images, videos, and other multimedia data, few file formats actually store data using the uncompressed approach. Examples of these formats are BMP and TIFF files. Most file formats use some kind of compression to reduce red redundant and unnecessary data. For the purposes of this presentation, we will mainly be sticking to the compression of uh, image files. Lossless compression. Lossless compression looks for repeated patterns in the data, such as large blocks of identical color. Then it stores them in a manner which requires less space, which in image files means assigning each pixel a code according to its color and then maps out the numbers. Even though the picture is reduced to lines of code, this form still allows the original data to be restored exactly in an instant. Lossless compression generally works well with images that have large, solid blocks of the same color. This means it is good for storing cartoon-style images, diagrams, and other similar styles. However, lossless compression is less effective at compressing photography. This is because most photographs have many shuttle, subtle shades of color, which each have to be assigned their own unique code. Lossy compression. Lossy compression is a trade-off. It sacrifices quality in return for reduced storage, storage space. It does this by, by discarding data that probably won't be missed by the audience. For example, in images, it may note that two adjacent pixels are almost the exact same color and simply apply the same value to each. Problems with lossy compression. Once image data has been discarded due to, due to um, once image data has been discarded to compress a photo, it can't be recovered. Because of this, quality loss is permanent. This is an important consideration when saving images. Repeatedly editing an image, saving it in lossy format, editing again, and saving again will, will result in a gradual loss of quality at, e at each save. The most common format for lossy compression with images is JPEG. In this diagram, we can see the differences between lossless and lossy compression. As you can see, in the lossless compression, the original is compressed and then restored to exactly the same file size, or exactly the same image. In lossy compression, the, the original is compressed and restored to uh, an image that is not so great in quality, but mo but most of the time, if done correctly, the the uh, the person who sees the photo will not notice. Compressing other data, compression, while mostly used on image, sound, and video files, is also used in others. Any type of data can be compressed to some degree. For example, program files are often compressed using the lossless method, which, when downloading, uh, when downloading, to save time and bandwidth. Common file. Common file formats for general file compression in include .zip, .rar, and .7-zip. These are logos for the, very, for the most common file compression and decompression programs, such as WinRAR, 7-zip, and others. PPI. The number of pixels per inch in an image has a large effect on its quality. PPI determines how many pixels are displayed in each inch of the output, either on screen or on paper. This factor controls the physical size of the output and how sharp it will, will appear when viewed. Let's say, for example, that you have an image which is uh, 1024 by 768 pixels. Displayed at 96 ppi, standard for consumer computer monitors, the image would be 10.6 by 8 inches because 1024 divided by 96 is 10.6 and 6, 768 divided by 96 is 8. If it was displayed at 1 ppi, it would be 1200, or sorry, 1,024 inches by 768 inches, but each pixel would be one square inch wide, which would not look good unless viewed from a very far distance. DPI. DPI, or dots per inch, is a term often confused with, P confused with PPI, but is not the same thing. It is also known as printer resolution. DPI refers to the number of inks, ink dots per inch a printer produces when printing an image. This is not necessarily the same as PPI, because a printer may use more than one dot per pixel. Continued. Most consumer printers are advertised at approximately 1,200 dpi, although some run up to 9,600 dpi. However, this is misleading. Printers have only a few colors, namely black, cyan, magenta, and yellow, so to produce all possible colors they need to mix inks, which means they need to do that by putting multiple dots on the same spot. A higher dpi means, it means they can mix colors in finer qualities, making a more accurate color representation and smoother transition between tones. These are, uh, this is a very simple, um, 
disregard that caption. This is a very simple photo uh, showing the effect of PPI on photos. As you can see, they're both the same size physically, but the the image with the greater PPI is higher quality and has more facets, more pixels that it can be seen at. These are my references. Um, I created this PowerPoint, and those are the bunch of images and my opening song, as well as the IB, as as well as the official IB book. Uh, thank you for watching.